I think we are ready to go for our test drive. Right. Can I have the keys, please? Yeah. Here you are. Hey guys, let's go for a ride. My name is Belinda Akaba Akos, an electrical engineer here at Solar Taxi. Hello people, welcome to another edition of Thai Conversations with Ida Felkwanate. Thai simply means technology, innovation and entrepreneurship. And today I'm going to be talking to another African hero, George Apia. Thank you so much, George, for having us today. You're welcome. Okay, so George, um, I know for people in the tech space in Ghana, most of us know you, you're a mentor to many, and you, you are really up there when it comes to tech. But just tell us a little bit about yourself for those of um, us watching from Africa and outside of Africa. Well, um, <laughs> thank you for, for your kind ways. Um, so my background is electrical and electronics engineering. Um, I come from very humble beginnings. Um, um, I did my master's in renewable energy um, at KNUST. Both, I mean, I'm a KNUST person. Yeah, um, I spent some time working at KNUST um, with the energy um, center, um, which I still I would say I still have links there. <laughs> yeah, but um, um, I also am a techpreneur. Um, that is what I've been doing for the past years now. Um, yeah, and it's quite quite a simple. Okay. <laughs> All right. So I know that you are the CEO and co-founder of Kumasi Hive. Okay. And you're also the CEO and co-founder of Solar Taxi. Uh. <laughs> You're also the CEO, okay, no, the executive chairman of Ghana Tech Club. <laughs> I'm sure there's more that I do not know about. So. <laughs> that is good that you don't know. So we keep this <laughs> All right, so George, tell us about how you transitioned from Creativity Group to Kumasi Hive. All right, so, um, I mean, at a point where we have a number of wonderful innovation coming from Creativity Group, um, there became a need for us creating a platform that could support some of this innovation to actually become products that help the community and benefit the people. Um, so that was one issue that we were dealing with. The second part was to, then there were nothing like a, a hub in Kumasi. Mm -hmm. um, everything was in, Kuma, in Accra. So you have very wonderful guys doing wonderful stuff, but all have to migrate from Accra to Kumasi. Uh, from Kumasi to Accra. Um, and that was quite not a bird actually. Because you have to pitch events or investor meetup, you have to come to Accra. So mm -hmm. we actually set up the first hub outside Accra. Um, and, and with this situation and that of um, uh, um, we trying to create the platform for our members to take the innovation to the market, led us to establish Kumasi Hype. But Kumasi Hype was then meant to be something for the ecosystem, connect the entire ecosystem. And I think in the past year, that's what exactly we have done. And the establishment of Kumasi Hive also led to inspire a lot of activities in the ecosystem, uh, which I think it, also, it has been wonderful so far. Yeah, and so can you tell us about some of the projects you've actually worked on and what you can actually do at the Hive? Well, the Hive is a tech innovation hub. Um, it has a um, maker space, the first maker space in the country. Um, it has oh, nice. an, yeah, it has an <laughs> AI lab. Um, it has a, um, a blockchain um, team. It has a, a bio biomaker lab or biotech lab. Mm -hmm. um, it has a um, um, drones lab. It has a I mean, the labs are quite. I mean, wow. a lot. If I should put that okay. way, but um, we kind of, we kind of, you can, you can clearly see that we are the only high tech hub in in the country. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, if we want to do high tech, that is that is something you always find with us. Um, we so we're able to take ideas. People come in with just ideas. Be able to build a prototype and take a prototype to market. Okay, so, so talking about right. talking about yeah. people coming in, how can someone who wants to join um, Kumasi Hive? How do you join? Do I have to pay a fee? Do I have to fill mm. a form? Not necessarily. I mean, um, you can mo most people join Kumasi Hive through the programs that we run. Okay. So if you run a program, we open up application. You apply. If you get selected, you are part of it. Then we can then provide a support for you. Yeah. Okay. So that that is as easy as this. But if you have 
something doing, you already have an idea or something you're building, you can, you can walk in and talk to the team. Okay. And we always provide support regardless. Yeah. Okay. So I know you are the executive chairperson of um, Ghana Tech Club. <laughs> now, how did you get there and what do you do there? Like, what changes are you making there? What innovation is happening there? Well, I'm executive director uh, <laughs> okay. for Ghana Tech Club. Mm -hmm. um, I'm also a co-founder for Ghana Tech Club. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. I didn't know that. <laughs> So actually, the, the idea of Ghana Tech Lab is fundamentally um, built on the model of Kumasi Hive. Um, okay. That is something that was perfected over time, and that was then used to Ghana Tech Lab as a scale-up model for that. Okay. Um, and, but Ghana Tech Lab was set up to be an ecosystem hub. So okay. and Kumasi Hive being a hub, based in Kumasi, that's a with the people, mm -hmm. um, Ghana Tech Lab was made to serve the entire country okay. and also serve other hubs. But the model, which we call the base innovation model, mm -hmm. was what Ghana Tech Lab meant to grow. So um, we had support from the World Bank and then through the Ministry of Communication to then scale up this model um, um, that be able to provide uh, uh, serve as a vehicle to accelerate digital skills training and digital entrepreneurship for the okay. youth. Um, okay. So basically that was what we are doing. That's what we are trying to achieve with that. Um, we, we, we provide um, um, a print such a way that you are able to come in as a no skilled person mm -hmm. um, in the space of about six months you you can have a job or start a business in the in that period um, okay. so that is what it is it's a very comprehensive model that so, we are working with so, so Ghana Tech Lab is just an ecosystem hub so your bias was tech it's not just any kind of tech enabled Tech enabled. Um, yeah. okay, so. I mean, tech enabled could be simple as having a Facebook account. Okay, yes, all right. That's a tech so, enabled. Okay, so um, fast track, like we're just there, we found out that George Apia is selling electric vehicles. First, so you started with the solar taxi, so you had this solar aboboyas and solar mm -hmm. motorbikes, and before we knew it, the electric uh, powered uh, motorbikes and cars. Mm -hmm. Tell us about that journey and tell us about why solar taxi why did you want to venture into this space considering the fact that ghana is even struggling to support the country with electricity <laughs> well i, I got to ghana is like this so they can electricity i think it's more how to do infrastructure issues okay uh, but the country currently have uh, oversupplied uh, in terms of power mm -hmm. um yeah but um i mean the journey for solar taxi began somewhere in 2017 when we work on um a prototype in Kumasi mm -hmm. Hive, um, that is a small vehicle mm -hmm. powered by um, solar panels, panels and all the batteries and all that, which I think was quite successful. Um, so build on that, we had support for Mastercard Foundation to look at the the business the business aspect of that innovation, okay. um, and we're able to really understand the market. So 2018. That was what we were doing. Um, we spent time to understand the market and all that. We ran a couple of pilots, um, which was quite successful. And we move on from 2018 to setting up a company um, mm -hmm. out of the results that we have, um, having further support from the Mastercard Foundation. That is that birth of a commercial entity as Solar Taxi. Uh, so by 2018, we're fully running as a, as a startup, mm -hmm. um, scaling from Accra to Kuma, uh, from Kumasi, Kumasi to, Accra. to Accra, and we now have operations in Takrade and, wow, and, 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 yeah, and, and Tamale and Sunyane. We have operations there. Yeah, um, and we are growing actually. Mm -hmm. We are growing. Um, so that is that is the journey of what to, we want to do. So so Solatas is an e-mobility company. Mm -hmm. uh, we provide e-mobility. So provide mobility services or transportation services for across board actually okay so yeah. I've noticed that you have this um, unique um, should I say module or style where you mm. bring in female engineers to actually okay. assemble the motorbikes and mm. all of that why are you is it like a female empowerment something you're just passionate about empowering women <laughs> why this actual choice but why why shouldn't that be the case why why do you go to a company a giant company find only guys why well, <laughs> it's kind of unfortunate. I'm actually an engineer yeah. myself, and so, I find so that are they making intentional effort to employ guys? Do you think so? 
Um, so why would you question when they are girls? Oh, no, because it's <laughs> red, right? And oh, then that's okay, don't worry. Uh, but it just to it kind of talk about mm-hmm. our mindset um, mm-hmm. that um, we don't question why there's only guys or why majority guys, but we find it out of place when there's all guys. Oh, wow, this is new. When there's only girls. Uh, I think we need to get to a point that it should be, oh, that is normal <laughs> kind of thing. Uh, but... Um, well, when as we, we as we, we build up solar taxi, mm-hmm. and one thing we realized from our work and research that we're doing was that the value chain of transportation, the transportation sector, right from designing to to manufacturing, assembling to to um, production to 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 deployment like driving and all that. Mm-hmm. Um, women don't partake in the, the value chain. The only part in finding women, women partaking is maybe just boarding the vehicle or using the vehicle. <laughs> okay. But in terms of like where these jobs are created, mm-hmm. where the empowerment part is and where the finance money is there to make, women don't partake part in it. Mm-hmm. Um, and to it, which is not the best. So our, we, we decided to provide an equal opportunity so that women can also benefit from that. Mm-hmm. So we established the Female Engineering Academy um, okay. that focuses on training women. You can even come in as somebody with no engineering background. We train you for you to understand and for you to be an engineer that could design and then also um, manufacture, assemble and produce electric vehicles. Okay, so let yeah. me ask, how many cars and um, motorbikes have you assembled so far? So far, we have a fleet size of over 150. For which of them? For, for the electric bikes. For the bikes, okay. Yeah, and then for the tricycle, we have a fleet size of about seven. Um, seven it's okay. for the tricycle, we design for based on needs and based on customer um, 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 specification. Okay. So if a customer comes to us, that's when we design and build a tricycle. We don't build them and put them on the shelf or build okay. them and put them in the market until okay. a customer comes to us. Okay, what about um, the motorbikes, the delivery? So the motorbikes, for that, we, we, are, we, we currently have um, um, orders actually. Okay. So when we, we get in the parts and all that, our designs, our designs and stuff, we then build it and supply. Um, the cars, we currently have over, over 15 electric cars for the cars we can do do all the assembling okay. if we're doing assembly to be a bit semi knockdown but um we are working on um putting up a plant um that okay. allows us to do the full assembling Locally. of the cars over here but for the bikes and then the tricycle we are doing everything fully i, wow, I that's believe impressive. here you get a chance to see the arc um the I arc is an assembly unit um okay. so just to go in like the noah's noah's arc you know <laughs> Making a transition from from um, petrol and diesel based transportation okay. to, to yeah, so the no is arc. Um, so uh, the arc is where we do all the assembling and everything. So those ones we design and everything. We as we get the parts, we build them, we assemble them here. That's what we are doing for the bikes and the trucks. But for the car, when our plant is ready, hopefully, hopefully by the end of the year we should have our plants in. That this okay. that's our plants are far advanced. We are raising funding for that. So. We should be able to have the plant and commence full assembling of the cars too. All right. Thank you so much, George, for having us today. It's been oh, really welcome. exciting listening to you and hearing all your plans and <laughs> projects. So to our viewers, so let's go out, let's go and see the arc, let's go and see the beautiful engineering ladies, and let's take a test drive. an electrical engineer here at Solar Taxi. You are welcome to the ARC. Here in the ARC, we perform our assembly line, and in the assembly line, we have four main sections. That is the chassis, the accessories, the electricals, and the cover section. That's what happened here in the ARC. After that, there we have a full motorbike moving out on the streets. So here in the chassis section, it's made up of the frame, that is the whole body of the motorbike without the electric house, without the chassis, and without a cover. It's only the metal parts with the back tie and the front tie. That's what form part of the chassis section. And moving from there, we have the accessories and the electrical section. That is made up of the headlights, 
the throttle light, the throttle, the trafficator light, the main cable, the motor, the ESC, and the horn. So here we have um, my colleague here, Gifty, that is taking the female engineers through the assembly line, and they are on the electrical section. As you can see, they are on the electrical section. So here we have the dashboard. That's made up of the accessories, the dashboard, the headlights, the, trot the trafficator lights, the throttle. We have our brake. We have our electronic speed controller. We have our lithium ion battery here. And the motor, all these things form part of the electricals and the accessories section. Moving from there, we have the cover. And the covering is the last part of the motorbike. The cover is the last part of the motorbike and it has the delivery box. We have the delivery box. We have our front fenders, our back fenders, and um, we have this main cover here that we used to cover the battery so that it won't be exposed. And also we have our side covers that will expose our cables. We have our seat too. It also forms part of the cover section. and I'm an electrical engineer at Solar Taxi. Working with Solar Taxi has given me the opportunity to know much about electric vehicles. I've also learned how to do assembling and then do troubleshooting and then maintenance on electric vehicles. It has also given me the opportunity to be more confident about myself in all that I do. I'm able to speak very well publicly and then it has also boosted my morale. So working with Solar Taxi is, has been a great opportunity for me, and I'm glad I was given the opportunity to work here. Thank you. with Avala, he's an engineer at Solar Taxi, and he's going to tell us about some of the modules, and he's going to assist me in my test drive. So Avala, tell us about the cars you have. Thanks, Aida, and your team for visiting us today. So um, I'm sure a lot of Ghanaians, especially, because uh, electric vehicles have not penetrated our ecosystem so much, we are not sure what's under the hood. So um, actually, uh, generally, an electric vehicle has up to 60% uh, similarity in parts okay. to your conventional, your traditional petrol diesel car. Mm. So we have every your fuse box, your radiator, your air conditioner, your shocks, your suspension spring, everything. Generally, 60% is very similar to your petrol car, your diesel car. Uh, the main difference is the powertrain or the drivetrain, which is electric instead of petrol, an engine and transmission. So there's no transmission in this electric car. There's a motor. Which and in this case, this car is front driven, so there's a motor sitting in the front axle uh, connected to the wheels, and this is a motor controller. So, this, this is more like what your accelerator is connected to. When you accelerate, mm -hmm. it converts the frequency and then supplies the, the motor, increases the speed, and reduces. Okay. This is a DC to DC converter. Mm -hmm. So, this is in the same sort of circuit with your battery here as you have in your. Um, petrol car. So instead of an alternator, we have this. Okay. Yeah, and this will supply your accessories, your lights, your AC, whatever. So radio, radio and all of that. Exactly. Okay. All of that and all the sensors that are working inside. This is mainly for the drivetrain. Okay. And it's in between the battery and the motor. Just that. Okay. So everything else is here. Mm. Instead of an alternator, we have this. So basically, that's what's under the hood. Uh, all these tanks, you see this for your brake fluid, this for your wiper fluid, um, this is your radiator, basically, yeah. Okay, so what module is this? Okay, so this, this is a BYD E6. Now, BYD lists as uh, the top three Chinese car manufacturers. They make petrol cars, diesel cars, and all that. Okay. But, uh, uh, they, but they are a prominent battery manufacturer, so 
Okay. For the past 15 years, they went into electric vehicle development. And then, um, you are Chinese, yes, but um, their design and their, their appeal is more towards the European market. Okay. So this car is made with a Mercedes-Benz Daimler standards. Okay, which other modules do you have? Okay. We have a Cherry, Cherry Tigo, which is right behind you. Okay. We have Dong Feng. Dong Feng, uh, but we don't have any available here. They are all in okay. town. People are using Send them. them. Uh, we have Levan and Ford. Okay. Yes, we have their sedans, SUVs, and crossovers. Okay. So what we have here today, uh, these two cars are crossovers. Okay. Now, in a Tesla, you will find that the, the, the bonnet is not so busy like this. Mm. But uh, in, in this case, they're trying to make sure that the, the, the cabin is spacious. In a okay. Tesla, this is in the boot. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. so they're trying to make sure the cabin is spacious. So they move everything else that you put in the boot into this space. Okay. So it's more like a family car with enough space for your luggage and all that. Okay. All right, so I think we are ready to go for a test drive. Right. Can I have the keys, please? Yeah. Here you are. <laughs> actually very smooth and I noticed that when I started the car there was no sound like I was, I was waiting for something to make noise like you know the normal regular four cars There's no it was just smooth There's no engine. actually in some electric cars they have to um, they have they have to install some sound so that they make you know like, that the car has actually started, started exactly. yeah wow because if like like because I didn't know I was just waiting I was wondering ah, what's happening why the car didn't start to work very silent. So, so um, mm -hmm. ordinarily, this is your instrument gate, uh, panel okay. to see what's happening in the car. This is more of like your infotainment system with your radio and mm. your Bluetooth, whatever you want to do. And your temperature controls are right here. Nice. Actually, we are, we are, we are driving in eco mode. In okay. Eco. So you can see it displayed here. Eco, okay. In eco mode, your speed is limited. Mm. Your acceleration is limited. Mm. And uh, with eco, so you know, Generally, electric cars are given a range uh, after a certain, like, standardized test. So, so the range on this car is 300, 300 kilometers. But yeah, you can actually achieve more than 300. Mm. But 300 is like the average, like, line of best fit. Okay. If, if you're not using your AC, you're driving slowly, you can actually do more than 300. Oh, and okay. actually, for an electric car, when you're in traffic, <laughs> you don't lose power or you don't lose energy. Oh, okay. Yes, Unlike the uh, regular cars exactly. that I use for. Because once you hit the brakes, there's a contactor that opens, mm. and there's no, there's no, there's no power being consumed, so okay. nothing is working. So right here, you see, you see, um, you see your consumption pattern here. When you're accelerating, okay. you see that the arrows are yellow, and they're moving from the battery to the motor. But when you slam the brakes. They become green and you see that it reverses from the motor into the battery oh now, okay that's what they call regenerative braking oh like in electrical engineering like drives exactly okay. so it, it's it's an electric drive system that is basically in here. oh okay so um so averagely like how much um how much electricity do you need or how much does it cost to actually fully charge an electric car like this okay so um interestingly uh this car has a 57 kilowatt, kilowatt hour battery and based on ECG's uh, commercial tariff, there's residential and whatever, based on ECG's commercial tariff, it will cost around 40 CDs to fully charge, 40 Ghana CDs. Wow, and, and, and 40 CDs and only. 40 CDs only. <laughs> this is the real only. <laughs> this is the real only, right? 40 CDs for 300 km, so, so you can even do the breakdown and see how much you, you, you are spending on every kilometer and compares mm -hmm. with your petrol vehicle and you see how much you're saving. 
uh, it is actually a huge percentage. And uh, at the end of the year, you see the true cost of ownership. Uh, if you had had, if you are driving a petrol F4, car, yeah, exactly. Because for I think you have to buy like. 300 or 250 depending on your tank size like to fill your tank so uh, 300 so, so uh, in this in, in 400 uh, exactly so in this terms 40 cities to in quotes fill your tank <laughs> wow impressive it's oh. nice to see um, what we learned in school like science or theory being applied and it's really nice to know that it's not even far from us you know usually you're just thinking about it in the books on like what you see on youtube and everything i think about it in terms of machines but then exactly. seeing it being applied in a vehicle is i don't know it's, it, it makes engineering real i, I tell you <laughs> yeah, <you're laughs> anyway. right. so how's your experience been like at uh, solar taxi well um my experience at solar taxi has been a mixture of you know working and learning a very very good mixture of both of that uh, at solar taxi uh, you don't just come to work every day. This is an emerging market. This is new, and so you have to do a lot of uh, uh, research, self improvement, and all that. Mm. And um, actually, the challenges at Solar Taxi are very much quite motivating in themselves <laughs> <laughs> because why um, <laughs> you know uh, the, the electric vehicle market even globally is very young. Mm. And so not everything is on the internet. So there's a lot of, you know, um, I say it's motivating because when you're able to solve a problem, it is very rewarding. I mean, it's very, uh, what's, what, what's the word to use, you know? Worthwhile. It's very worthwhile, yes. You, you, are, you are the English person. Uh. <laughs> it's very worth. When, when, when you figure out something, it's, it's exciting. And uh, you, you are, you know, you're encouraged to do more. Okay. Yes. So I'm currently charging the electric car and it's been really exciting driving it. After you drive an electric car, you wouldn't feel like driving a full car because it's really smooth. So thank you all for joining me and thank you Solar Taxi and Avala for hosting us and George for hosting us today. It's been exciting and I'll see you all next time. Love you. Bye.